Question number 11, Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Broadcasting. What is the name of the documentary which was withheld in the papers released publicly by New Zealand On Air titled, quote, Records of Decisions Made at Working Group Meeting? The Honourable Craig Foss. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I understand the documentary in question is still under development with the broadcaster and decisions are still to be confirmed about whether it will proceed or receive funding from New Zealand On Air. I have not been made aware of the details of this documentary and it would not be in the public interest for me to provide details because of the commercial sensitivity around decisions still to be confirmed by the Board of New Zealand On Air. Clear current. Supplementary. Who made the decision to withhold the name of the documentary? The Honourable Craig Foss. Uh, Mr Speaker, as pursuant to this, this question, um, I just repeat my first answer. If the members refer to the OIA table the other day, the OIA was to New Zealand on air, I believe. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. It was, a, it was a really simple question. Who made the decision to withhold? It has nothing to do with the OIO. No, OIA. Uh, the oh, the, member, the oh, member still makes a valid point. I mean, this order, this is an important issue. The Minister has indicated that there are issues of public interest around this. However, the member asked who made the decision to withhold the name of the particular programme that's, that was deleted from a document. And, and the Minister may not have that not information, but it would be helpful if he made some reference to it in his answer. Mr Speaker, that wasn't no, my point document. Point of order, the Honourable... I'd just like you to reflect on the line of questioning that's been going on on this for some days now. Increasingly, those questions are starting to require the Minister to have uh, ready knowledge of operational issues. Now, that's simply inappropriate. And Mr Speaker, I think to uphold questions that uh, require answers, that, well, that would need answers that would require the Minister having uh, such operational detail is quite out outside the, the understandings of how the separation between governance and uh, the, the uh, entities themselves work. Order, I, I appreciate the concern of the member. I mean, but ministers uh, in relation to entities like New Zealand On Air do have a responsibility to answer questions about while they're not accountable necessarily for operational matters, they have a responsibility that enables them to be questioned on those matters. Now, I accept that on, in this case there may be... The Minister may not actually have that information. If he doesn't have that information, there's no reason why he would necessarily be expected to have that information because it is an operational matter, presumably. And he may not have that information. It would be a perfectly reasonable answer if he didn't have that information. If he uh, did have the information, he may consider it to be delving into a matter that is still of commercial, because where you've got a range of commercial programs under consideration uh, by New Zealand On Air, there may be con commercial sensitivities around uh, releasing any information about those. That is a matter of public interest, and the Minister is the best person to judge that. There are a range of answers that are available to the Minister, and I, and I, but I think the question was in order. Uh, the Honourable I, Brown. I'd ask you to think, uh, to perhaps review that um, uh, that um, uh, offering to the House at a later point and if necessary come back to us because I don't think it would be appropriate for uh, members of this House to be able to ask details of police operations or for that matter some military operations or perhaps uh, the security intelligence service or any range of other things Mr Speaker and uh, it, it also would mean that many ministers would need to know quite considerable and extensive details about the operation of SOEs for example uh, and so, Mr Speaker, uh, there are sort of bounds un under which the ministerial responsibility uh, is exercised, but it doesn't go right down to the sort of daily Order. operation of these equities. Order. No, I, I apologise to the member, but I disagree with the, what he is uh, asserting here. That, and I refer him to Speaker's Ruling 1574, that, uh, uh, that there is no convention that ministers are not answerable for operational matters. Uh, now, the Minister may not have operate, you know, information on operational matters, or he may consider, or she may consider it not in the public interest to give detailed information on operational matters. But that does not preclude members from asking questions about operational matters. And, and it's perfectly within that, as I 
outlined before. I'm trying to be helpful to the House. There are a range of answers available to the Minister. Uh, he must, of course, be truthful to the House. But if it's not in the public interest to reveal certain information, operational information, that's the Minister's judgment, and the House cannot second-guess that. But to preclude members or prevent members from asking questions is, is, not, uh, is not within standing orders at all. Now, so much time has expired. I invite uh, Claire Curran to repeat a question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Who made the decision to withhold the name of the documentary? The Honourable Craig, Craig Fox. Uh, if it's referring to the, OI, uh, the, the, the point in the primary question, uh, that was a document released under the OIA by New Zealand on air. So I presume the answer would be pursuant to whoever signed out that OIA to the member, whoever, whoever requested it in the first place. I do not know who that person was, Mr Speaker. Claire Curran. Doesn't know much of who Order. Given the uh, four... Do, uh, the four documentaries um, released in the OIA um, under from New Zealand on air uh, are, are listed together. Who makes the decision to fund documentaries with, uh, f from New Zealand on air? Is it the board who makes the decision to fund documentaries? If so, why is it that the name of the withheld documentary cannot be released? The Honourable Craig Foss. Uh, with respect to my primary answer, Mr Speaker, but the general construct is the Crown funds New Zealand on air, New Zealand, the Board of New Zealand on air, New Zealand on air have long-standing working groups and processes that decide themes uh, and contestability, etc., for programmes. They call them working groups, Mr Speaker. It's within that process that met the members and those they engage with from the sector decide the content or the general direction of whatever programmes they end up funding. Click. Point of order, Claire Curran. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Um, I have been trying to get the Minister to answer direct questions for a number of days. He gives, he, he gives no, the reason... Order. Order. Um, that's not an appropriate way to start a point. I've been trying to get the Minister to answer direct questions. Forgive me but I did not observe the last question to be a particularly direct question. And, uh, but the Minister did answer the question. The Minister pointed out these working groups uh, are involved in making decisions and he's not involved in them. And he didn't, uh, he, he didn't uh, go so far as perhaps to identify the final decision-making person, but I think it was an answer to the question. The quality of it can be judged, but then the quality of the question can also be judged by members of the House. The member has further supplementaries available should... Supplementary question, Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, would it be ethical for Mr McElroy, the chair of the Prime Minister's uh, electorate committee, who works closely with Media Works on these four documentaries, to tell the Prime Minister the topic of the documentary? The Honourable Craig Foss. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have full confidence in the board, the members of the board. They all operate under the Crown Entities Act 2004. And I note, Mr Speaker, I also operate under the Broadcasting Act 1989, which prohibits me or any minister to give any direction in respect of any programme or content, Mr Speaker. Well, Mr. Point Speaker, of order, order. order. Point yes. of order, the Honourable Trevor Mayer. Uh, Mr Speaker, it was a, I think, pretty direct question. Would it be ethical for the board member working with Media Works to tell the Prime Minister, whose electorate he is the chair of, order. Um, order. the name of the documentary? Well, the member's making, uh, really making an allegation in the... Uh, it's either a hypothetical question or an allegation. I'm not sure which. But hypothetical questions, there's no precise answers to them. And let's assume it is a hypothetical question. Let's put the best uh, uh, interpretation on it. And the, the minister's indicated that he has absolute confidence in the board uh, and its members. And, uh, and uh, that confidence, I presume, uh, includes to behave ethically. And he's got... He's, uh, and since it was a hypothetical question, I don't think we can press the minister too much further on that. Uh, Mr Speaker, the point, the point I, of order, the Honourable yeah, 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 The point I'm trying to work out, sir, is whether it is ethical or not. Um, and we can't tell from that answer whether it's the Minister's view uh, that that passing order. on the Prime Minister would be order. unethical. Order. The, mem the member, though, is making, a, I presume, posing a hypothetical question, were a member of the board to do that. And uh, the, the Minister is indicating that he has confidence in the board 
and I presume that includes to behave ethically. So he's, he's not prepared, clearly the minister is not prepared to, you know, to get involved in the detail of what might be, in his view, ethical behaviour compared with the requirements under the Act of the Board. And I think I can't press the minister further on that. Does the, do I, the, is Claire Curran's supplementary question? Mr Speaker, my question supplementary to the, um, to the Minister. How many conversations or representations has he had with the Chair of the Board on this matter? Have they discussed uh, the content of the documentaries? And was the name of the documentary that has been withheld mentioned during those conversations? The Honourable Craig Foss. I think there are three questions in there, Mr Speaker. I have regular meetings. I've had met with the Chair initially as an initial meet and greet. I think we've had an update since then. Um, and pursuant to the, the, uh, the point of the primary question, um, I'm, I have not had discussions with the uh, Chair of the uh, New Zealand On Air, but let me just take this moment to thank the Chair of the New Zealand On Air Board. Now order, order, order. Now order, order. Now the question did have three, was three separate questions. The Minister can answer any one, any, any one of them. Well, the first one, if I recollect correctly, was how many conversations he had with the Chair of the Board of New Zealand On Air. Did he discuss uh, the nature of these documentaries with the Chair of New Zealand On Air? And the third one was, and was the name of this particular documentary mentioned in those discussions? The Minister can answer any one of those, but he should be able to answer the, that question because the Minister would know whether the Minister has talked about those matters. And the Minister has responsibility for what he talks about with the Chair of the Board. The Honourable Craig Foss. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have normal conversations with the Board, as I do the Chair of the Board, as, as normal. Um, and all range of matters about New Zealand on air. Uh, there was, there, um, we might have had a general discussion about this um, particular issue, but, uh, Mr Speaker, there would have been one or two conversations. Nothing particular to this particular issue whatsoever. Question number 12, the Honourable Tohenere. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Economic Development and asks, what progress 